Now we can use this inbuilt method reverse to reverse and uh, reverse the element of a list. So here when I call even underscore integers dot reverse, it will do an in place reverse. So now when I print even underscore integers, we should see integers from 70 to 2 in the reverse order. So 70, 68, 6 going to all the way to 2. So dot reverse again reverses our uh, list. So every element uh, is now in uh, is in in so it reverses the list in place so the last element is now the first element the penultimate element is the uh, second element and so on and so forth we can also use the sort method to sort uh, integers in ascending or descending order by default the sort goes in ascending order so now Again, the dot sort method will sort our list in place. So simply we can call even integers dot sort and then ag again print even integers after the sort. So now let's see what will be even integers after the sort. Before sorting, it was 70, 68, 66 to 2. Now notice after the sort, it's back to its original order, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, and going up to 70. Now we can pass this optional flag reverse is equal to true if we want to sort in the reverse order. And now, again, it will sort it in descending order, and we should see again 70, 68, 66, so on and so forth. Until two. So we can use the inbuilt methods sort and reverse to do in-place sorting and reverse. Now there is another function. This is not part of the list class. This is a global uh, function in Python, which is known as sorted. We can pass lists to this function sorted and it will return a new sorted list this is not doing an in-place sorting this will create a new sorted list and return it back so now let's see what happens when we pass even underscore integers notice currently even underscore integers has uh, items in reverse order so 70 68 going up to 2 now when we call the sort sorted method it should return us a new list which is going from 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 up to 70. However, even underscore integers will still remain the same. So even underscore integers after sorting is still 70, 68, 66, 64 up to 2. So when we want to sort a list not in place, we can pass the list to this sorted function. And the sorted function will simply return us a new sorted list. If we won't, don't want to uh, create a new list, we can simply call the inbuilt method sort, which is part of the class list that will do in place sorting. Now it's not necessary to sort, uh, it's not necessary that our items should be integers for the sort to work. We can have items of different types for the sort to work. So suppose I want to sort fruits. We saw previously fruits had apple, orange, kiwi, berries, and other fruits. Now let's see what happens when we call the sort method on this fruits list. Now notice the fruits are now sorted in lex lexicographic order. That is first, the fruit with which begins with A is at the first position. Fruits with fruit which begins with B is the second position. B A comes before B E, so berries comes after banana. Similarly, kiwi uh, comes next, then orange, and finally pineapple. So you can also sort strings. So you can also start sort uh, uh, items that are not integers using the sort method. Now we can pass a function to uh, this sort method, which says uh, which tells python how to sort the elements of our list so suppose i want to sort fruits based on the length of a string i can simply pass the function len as a key to the sort method and this function now will be used on each element of our list to sort it so again let's call sort with key as len this time let's print fruits and check what is the new order now notice kiwi has only four characters so that's the first element lists can also have duplicates so there are two kiwis the second element is also kiwi 
apple is the third element since it has five characters then banana orange berries and pineapple now if there are two elements or items uh, with same length then again the lexicographic order would be used to uh, pick the the right order okay next let's see how to uh, extend strings or merge strings so previously we saw how to uh, extend using the plus equal to operator now i'm showing you how to concatenate to two lists using the plus operator previously we saw this with um, strings when we pass two strings to the plus operator as operands it will simply join or concatenate strings now with lists the behavior still remains the same so here i'm creating a new list of uh, cubes so uh, the list stores cubes of integers going from one to uh, six and now i want to extend this list by adding more cubes so at the end we will have all the cubes from one to ten part of this uh, list so first let's print the the initial cubes Notice it has only 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, and 216. And now I can add more elements to this list by using the plus operator. And here I'm creating a new temporary list. And notice I'm also using the exponent operator to compute Q. So the items need not be uh, values. The items can be expression which will be evaluated. So here 7 to the power of 3, 8 to the power of 3, 9 to the power of 3, 10 to the power of 3 is first evaluated and the result is will be stored. So 7 star star 3 will not be the content of our list when we print it. It will be actually what is 7 to the power of 3. Okay. Now notice more cubes has uh, okay so more cubes does not contain uh, this concatenation and the reason why it does not contain the concatenation is because I'm simply printing cubes I, I had to store this back in this variable cubes and then print it which was missing and therefore we were simply seeing the original cubes now let's see what happens when we store it back now notice more cubes has all the cubes beginning from 1 going up to 10 also, what this what this tells us is that the extension is not in place. This is simply joining two lists and creating a new list. The new list is now stored back in the same variable list uh, cubes. So, if we want to instead, if you want to create uh, join these two lists without uh, creating a new list, we can use the extend function. So here, if I do cubes dot extend and pass this list, this time we should still see the same result, but there was no new list created. So this time, uh, our initial list was extended by adding additional elements to it. The additional elements was populated by passing a new list, which was. Uh, 7 cube, 8 cube, 9 cube, and 10 cube. Okay. Now, if we want to clear all the elements of the list, we can use the clear method. This will simply erase everything. So, if we do clear and then print cubes, we should see an empty list. Okay. Previously, we saw how to simply remove a single element using uh, remove now clear will simply delete all the elements all the items that are part of the list okay now let's see what happens when we write this particular statement here i want to uh, store squares so squares currently has 4 16 36 and 64 i want to uh, create a new variable squares one which is equal to squares the question is will this create a new copy or will this uh, squares one point to the same 
uh, list squares so let's first verify whether squares one is the same list or not so to do that i will simply add so first let's print squares one and squares and then i have i will modify one of the list so suppose i want i want to drop an item from this list i can use pop now again let's print squares one and squares if it's a copy we should see the original list squares to be to remain the same so it should not change if it's not a copy then our original list will also change so let's first execute it and then check the result notice initially squares one and squares are both the same however after the pop both squares and squares one and squares uh, um, have one element less that is the last element uh, is missing so what this says is the assignment operator is not creating a new list it is simply uh, creating a new variable which is pointing to the same list so since lists lists contain references all it is doing is creating another list which contains the same references instead if we want to actually make a copy we need to use this syntax here wherein on the right hand side now i am creating a copy by using a slice so the slice here creates a new copy and since I'm not passing the start and the end, it will use the it will create a new slice that contains all the elements of the original squares. So now if we stop the program and remove this and put it here, let's check what happens. Let's see what will be squares and squares one before and after the copy. Now notice squares one. And squares are both same before pop after pop only squares one only uh, the, the the last element was removed from squares one and squares is still the same so if you want to create a copy of a list you need to use the square brackets operator to slice it and you can choose to slice either by using all the elements or if you want to make a copy of a a smaller uh, subset of the list we, you can provide a start and the end index for this slicing okay next let's continue let's check what are the different ways of uh, iterating through the list the so first is uh, familiar to you by now we can simply write for v in squares squares is an iterable object any iterable object we can use the in operator to iterate through the elements so we will simply point to uh, zero, uh, zeroth item at the first iteration. At the next iteration, it will point to the first item, so on and so forth. So it will simply go to the next item at each new iteration. So now when we simply print all the squares one by one, we should see in new lines 4, 16, 36 and 64. Now we can also use this enumerate method if we are interested uh, to know what is the index of a particular item. So in the first syntax we don't care about the index all we want is to loop through every single item of our list in a specific order and uh, in the second for loop I want to iterate through every single item but I also want to know what is the index of the current item. To do that, we can first pass a list to this enumerate function. So the enumerate function will return a tuple. We will see tuple uh, what a tuple is soon. For now, simply uh, uh, think about this as a pair of uh, variables. So this returns two uh, variables, i and v, and we can print i and v within the for loop. So first let's execute it and then check what this what this is doing now notice tick as at the zeroth index so the first print is zero tick second 
is tac so tac is at index 1 and 2 is at index 2 so if you want to know additionally what is the index at which a particular element is in the list we can use the enumerate method now we can pass the reversed function if you want to iterate in the reverse direction so suppose i want to print this same list again but this time i want to print it in the reversed order then we can simply pass reversed and now the squares will be displayed in the reversed order okay now notice 64 36 16 and 4 is the order in which the items were iterated through okay next let's see how to iterate a uh, loop over multiple lists simultaneously so i have two lists the first list is a uh, list contains a few questions and the second list contains answers to the question so the questions are name and favorite color answer is name of a person and his or her favorite color now to loop through these two lists simultaneously we can use uh, an inbuilt method called zip now notice again zip is not part of the class list so we are not calling it with a dot operator we're simply calling zip as a, uh, since zip is a global function so it is supported so it's a function which is defined within python so you don't need to include any modules you can simply call zip by passing two uh, iterables so here i'm passing two lists as two parameters for this function zip so since it takes two iterables it can also uh, take as inputs strings we will shortly see tuples dictionary sets are also iterables in python so you can also pass dictionaries tuples or items as parameters to this function now what this function returns is again a tuple so here for now let's just think about it as two variables it returns as q and a so at each new iteration it will give us two pairs and the pairs will point to uh, the corresponding elements in the two lists so in the first iteration or the zeroth iteration the zeroth item of questions which is name uh, will be in variable q and answers will have the first answer as part of a now i'm using here the format method which we saw in the previous class to fill the placeholders so i want to print what is your name and what and the favorite color using this particular uh, format using the format method so let's execute the code and now notice the use of the format method so first i'm i'm printing what is your name and the answer is it is Lancelot the second what is your favorite color it is blue so what is your is common to both the name and favorite color the placeholder is either name or favorite color which we can fill using the first parameter which we pass which is a question and the answer begins with it is for both favorite color and name and therefore we can pass the second placeholder as an answer which is a now zip simply uh, returns us corresponding pairs in the two lists so it's iterating through both the lists simultaneously at the first iteration it will give us name and lancelot second iteration it gives us favorite color and blue similarly we can create a third list and uh, also iterate over it so let's simply make a third list i don't care what it is so let's put a and b or even it can be some numbers and now i can simply add third a new variable and let's simply add the third variable here as a new placeholder and this time it will simultaneously iterate through three lists and notice the first 
print statement has number one second print statement has number two so it would have been better if i put this at the beginning right so this will look better so this simply says one what is your name my name is lancelot two what is your favorite color it is blue so we can iterate or loop through multiple lists using the zip method. 